Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our discussion on the career chat. We at Corporate Career Academy are looking forward to supporting you professionals, you students, to be able to understand your career better and be able to make an informed decision out of uh, uh, knowledge. We are bringing you experts in different areas of specialization to be able to guide you on the different uh, careers that are available in the market. What do you need to pursue a given career? What are the opportunities available in the market? Our aim is to ensure that you are able to make an informed career choice, an informed career decision. Research tells us that half of your life is spent on your career. If you are able to understand your career better, you become a better person. You are able to serve your employer better. And by so doing, you, be, you, you will then make the company earn more. So in today's presentation, we are looking at data science, an area that is not majorly uh, understood by most people. Today's speaker is Dr. Kayode Ayakoya. Doctor is from the US and he takes me at the US is now at 5 a.m. in the morning. He'll tell us through his, he'll take us through his journey as a data scientist, how his passion was brought by in this. And then from there, you'll be able to ask questions. Should you have any question, any clarification, kindly feel free to share it through our chat. You can chat us through uh, the YouTube channel, through the Facebook page, and we'll be able to answer you. We'll be able to read some of your questions and get clarification from Dr. Kayode. So uh, welcome, and uh, Mr. Kayode, welcome and talk to Africa. You know, you are one of us. Uh, talk to Africa about data analytics and why you are almost the only one doing that in your company. Thank you very much. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me today. I really appreciate um, the opportunity to be able to, to speak to uh, folks around across Kenya and around Africa um, to talk about opportunities in in the area of data science. Um, first, um, I, I think maybe I can share a little bit about myself. I I studied statistics um, initially, um, and and I'm originally from Nigeria. Perhaps I should start from there. And uh, at the at the time when I finished my secondary school. Um, I, tr I wanted to study industrial en industria engineering, um, let alone that I don't even know what, what it means to study industrial engineering. Um, and so we in Nigeria, we have an exam called the, the um, it is called JAMP. That is the entrance examination to university. I did it the first time I failed it, did it the second time I failed it. Um, by this time, most of my colleagues have now started entering university, and I was ready to study anything that they will that they will allow me to study in the university because I just wanted to go to the university. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm sure many people will be able to relate with that. And so I thought, well, if I can study computer science, I think I love computer science, but I know I will not be qualified. To, to go in to study computer science. So I'd rather go for statistics as kind of a back door to get into computer science. And, and that's how I ended up in, in statistics. Um, from there, um, I, I later realized, of course, that statistics is not what I really wanted to do. And then I, I stopped, you know, while I continued in the, in the polytechnic, I didn't even go to the university. Um, for my initial degree. While I continued doing that, I started to read about computer science, about programming, should I say, um, and took you know, exams in, in, in uh, Microsoft certification at that time. And that's how my journey really began. Um, I'm sure there will be a number of people that will, that will be able to, to relate to to what I, I'm talking about, but today I will be talking. I will be taking through, taking you through opportunities um, in in data science. Why you should think about data science? Um, is it really for you? Is there an opportunity for you in data science? Um, I don't know what you are studying right now, but should you even be thinking about data science at all? Uh, so, if you can please share my screen, uh, we can we can get things rolling. Thank you very much. All right, so. 
today I'll be talking about, you know, uh, talk a little bit more about myself. I'll talk about, you know, the career opportunities that are there today, um, the data science and analytics ecosystem, and, and how do you choose the right path for yourself? And then I will have a, a little bit of suggestions, um, and then we go into the question and answer session. So I will try and um, put all of these together in about, you know, um, an hour. So, <clears throat> like I said, I studied statistics um, at the Polytechnic of Ibadan, Nigeria, um, which is, you know, even up till today, if you go to if you go to the Polytechnic, you are considered as um, the less intelligent. <laughs> you are you are not intelligent, and and that is it. That is that is the end of your professional career you will always you know i still saw adverts today like recently i um, in about a week or two ago where they said um hnd holders should not apply and uh, i got a little bit infuriated but i later thought well it, it is what it is it's been like that for for many years um where you start doesn't matter it is where you want to go so i studied hnd in statistics eventually had opportunity to do an MBA from Nelson Mandela University in South Africa. And that eventually went into a, a PhD in computer science from the same university. I've had the privilege of working in several um, organizations and several industries, as you will find out later. I've had the opportunity to work in clinical trials in healthcare industry. I've worked in telecommunication. Um, I've worked in high tech organizations. I support companies. I work. I currently work for Deloitte Consulting, um, which is one of the top four um, organize, uh, consulting organizations in the world. And in my role as a consultant at Deloitte, I currently support organizations like Facebook and um, and a host of of, of others. Um, I enjoy mentoring a lot, and as a result, these. Um, data sequence came by um, first because I realized that over my career, I started noticing that I don't see a lot of people that look like me um, in the room. And so I started to think what, and ask question, what can I do? Um, and why is it that I don't see people that look like me? I, I, I hope you understand what I mean. Um, in the room. And I found out that, that, you know, um, several of these very large organizations will go to Eastern Europe, they will go to Asia to go and recruit people. Um, but then they believe that they don't have the critical mass of skills in, in across Africa for them to be able to come and recruit or open um, development or, or analytics offices in, in Africa. They do have offices in Africa. Um, they have Most of them would have offices in places like Nairobi. They would have offices like in, in, in Nigeria, uh, in Lagos, in Johannesburg. But most of those offices are for business, you know, um, uh, I would rather I'll say that they just want to take the money, opportunity for them to take the money and run. Um, and so we need to start positioning ourselves to be able to um, participate in this opportunity. But that is me in a in a nutshell. And just a quick disclaimer that you know, because of uh, the organizations that I that I work for, um, every thoughts and views and opinions that I will express today. Um, they are st solely that of myself and not a representation from any employer or organization and, 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 group, and group or individual. Uh, so let's just put that legal um, term out there. All right. So I believe that we have many people um, that are either currently students or you've just graduated and then you are asking yourself okay what now what is when i finish my college when i finish my university education what what is it for me my question um perhaps will be what is the main skill or what is the main outcome of university or tertiary education if you can get that right then you are fine if you get it wrong then there is going to be a big problem if you get if you get you know the the main outcome um of university education um maybe before i even go there i, I would like to to add quickly that while i was growing up um for us 
especially for my wonderful Nigerian parents. And uh, that is not just for my parents, but in my generation, um, the parents, um, they want their kids to study. You, you have only four options of things that you can study or you can become um, for your education. You can either become a medical doctor, you can become a lawyer, or you can become um, a, a lawyer, you can become an engineer, or you are, you, otherwise you become a disgrace to the family. So if you don't study medicine, you don't do law, and you don't, you know, uh, you don't become engineering in anything. Even it's, I mean, I said I wanted to do industrial engineering. I, I didn't even know what industrial engineers do. Um, just because I didn't want to fall into the fourth category, which is the disgrace of the family. But eventually, after sitting at home for like two or three years, after my secondary school education, I thought, you know what? It is what it is. If I will, if I will be categorized as a disgrace of the family, then I will just go for it. At least I know that I have university education. But you have to ask yourself, what am I coming out of the university with? Um, is it a certificate? Which unfortunately is what most of most of us are focused on. I just want that certificate. I don't know. Um, many of you, if you are in your final year right now, you're probably thinking. The moment I, I I I write the final exam, I will I will destroy all my books, and I don't want to see all the books again forever. I'm going into the industry, and I'm going to make a lot of cheddar. I'm gonna make a lot of money, and that's it. Um, but if you sit and think very well, you will discover that actually the main outcome of university education is to learn how to read, how to write. And now to ask questions. If you get that out of the university, how to read, how to write, and how to ask the right questions in research. If you if you get that out of the university, then you are set for life. If you miss that, you will have to come back and learn it. Unfortunately, you will have to come back and learn it. Otherwise, your, your degree um, can become almost useless because of the world that we live in today. The world has changed significantly, seriously so, such that even the skill that you think you have right now, um, that you are coming out of the university with, in a very few months or years down the line, the, the, the degrees is no longer useful, or the skills is no longer useful. And so it is, a very, it is very important that you start, you know, um, uh, 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 improving yourself and have a career plan not just, oh, my career plan is to go to university and I have studied industrial education, I've studied mathematics, I've studied statistics, and I'm, I'm, there, I'm there for a statistician. Question is, what is a statistician? What does a statistician do? Oh, I, I, I've gone to the university, I have studied medicine. Um, when you get out into the industry, you will discover a whole lot of, you know, other opportunities for medical doctors. I have medical doctors that are actually data scientists, okay, because the opportunities, uh, they're just enormous. So uh, I thought I will get you thinking about that. You know, um, uh, I know that that might annoy some people like, you mean I've wasted my time in the university? Absolutely no. No, you, you didn't waste your time in the university, but you need to understand that um, your goal and the, the goal of the university is not just to get a certificate. The goal is to solve problems, okay? And, and so you you have to hone your career as, as, a, as an individual. Um, the university does not hone your career. You hone your career. And so you have to decide Okay, now that I'm leaving the university, that I'm or that I have, you can you could even be in the workplace already at this point, okay? Um, but you have to ask yourself, what is it that actually make me come alive? What what excites me? What do I enjoy doing? Um, what do I what what beside what you enjoy doing? Because what you enjoy doing may not be able to pay your bills, okay? So I have to ask myself, okay, what do I enjoy doing? But then, beside what I enjoy doing, what are the opportunities that are there for me outside there? What What is there right now? What does the world need? What are people looking for? Not just, oh, I have um, 
uh, I, I sell water, okay? But how many people are thirsty around you? All right. So you have to make those decisions. What are the world? What is the world looking for? You might have control over um, what excites you. You might have control over what you are good at. If you think, OK, I'm not good at it, but it excites me, then you can train for it. But what you don't have control over is what does the world need? What where are the opportunities? Where is the world going today? And so that is where you have to begin you have to make up your mind to invest in yourself you have to identify what are the opportunities that are there in the world um be willing to change so i studied psychology um but you know um there, there isn't a lot of opportunity for me in that field oh i don't even enjoy it i mean you could be like me you study statistics and you just thought to yourself but what where do i use all of this or what is it useful for irrespective it doesn't matter you know what you are if you have a first class or second class or even a third class in what you have done the pop the, the biggest question is is it is anybody willing to buy what i have to sell and if you realize that you know um maybe not a lot of people are willing to buy or the opportunities are not a lot then you invest in yourself and you 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 position yourself as you know a, a continuous learner and, and that i believe is one of the things that has helped me as an individual i positioned myself as a continuous learner um going start starting my career journey from an hnd is it was kind of like a dead sentence like you that's it you are not going beyond there is a level you are not supposed to go beyond um but um it, it's it's those those things are not cast in the stone you can always change it at any point in time and so today I want to uh, uh, talk briefly about the data science ecosystem. You probably have been hearing um, the word you are on the on the charts today because you have been, I mean, you are on the call today because you've been hearing about data science and you, you wanted to see if this is for you. Well, let's, let's go. Um, so first is why data science? What is the foundation? Where, where does this even start from? What is the what is driving the industry of data science? It is the big data opportunity. It is the amount of data that we create today. Um, research, research shows us that you know in 2020 we created about 50 times of data that was created in 2011, just you know in a space of about 10 years. So. Only God then knows how much we are going to create this year. Um, just think about it. In 2020, most of us were at home um, and, and, and we were on our phone most of the time. And so one of the biggest drivers of this opportunity is mobile. The fact that people create a lot of data on our mobile. Across Africa today, there are about 500 million mobile devices okay that is cell phones mobile phones across africa and and i'm i'm so happy that you know uh, many of you will be will co actually be connecting from from kenya today where you were the first nation to set the pace in what we can do with mobile devices in 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 the financial sector um kenya led the 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 the, the charge in that area with Mpesa and, and so many other areas like that. And so we create a lot of data on a per second basis. Um, people are on Facebook, people are on, on, on YouTube watching, you know, hundreds of hours of videos per second. Um, that is creating a lot of data. On the other hand is the cloud. And what do I mean by the cloud? It is the cheap storage, um, facilities that are available for us. I, I remember um, when I started writing programs, my first computer used to be 256 megabyte. That is everything that is, it, it has. But today, I mean, uh, your, your, the phone that you have today is far better than that computer of mine that I started programming with, you know. And so today, you have cheap 
um, storage facilities, organizations can collect data as much as they want, and they have cheap storage for that data. And not only that, um, you can you also have cloud computing where people can actually you don't have to run you know um, uh, uh, you don't have to run you know processes on your local computer. You can actually run on you know very large computers. Um, connected by network. So I'm trying to stay away from the word cloud again in, in order to ex explain the cloud. So it's not just some cloud in the sky. It, it is some computers, you know, with very high, high, high resources that are somewhere. And then you have access into those computers very easily through your mobile phone, through your computers. And you don't, you literally don't have to save anything on your computer. And because that has become that is becoming cheaper and cheaper by the day. Organizations can crunch more data, they can save more data, they have more computing uh, uh, power. And so that continues to drive um, the big data. And of course, social media, billions of people connected on Facebook today on, on a daily basis. I'm, I'm sure currently uh, Facebook has about 2 billion or more active users, daily active users on Facebook, just think about that. On a daily basis, there are more than 2 billion people that will log on to Facebook. And uh, if they are like, you know, average users, you probably log into Facebook like 10 or, or 20 times a day, just continuously checking. And then on the other hand is the internet of things, your sensors, um, some of the new cars that you have today, they have several sensors that are continuously collecting data. And then uh, things like your, your, your wrist watches um, and so many other devices that have become cheaper today for organization to, to complete, to, to collect data. And that's some of the things that are driving the, the data science, the, 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 the data science, you know, uh, opportunities. So let's talk about actually the the multiple career opportunities that are there today. Most of you would have heard about data science, like I want to be a data scientist. You're probably thinking about it already, but it is not just the data scientist opportunity that is there. There are several opportunities for several people, depending on where you are coming from. OK, so you have the data analyst that will support business and operational teams um, in understanding data, in collecting, um, cleaning and visualizing data. OK, um, reporting per se, you know, you collect the data, you clean the data and you help organization to report data. So that is a wonderful career opportunity for, you know, um, depending on how far you, you want to go, it could even be your entry into the industry, but it, it doesn't stop there. You can come join as a data analyst and go in, and become a data scientist. Also, if you are more um, uh, interested in areas of like engineering, where you actually help organizations to create data pipelines, um, so you have organizations that create very large data sets and um, for them to be able to to use that data set in on a daily basis on a weekly basis even on hourly basis somebody is working at the background helping them to ensure that data is flowing as it should so that is a career opportunity on its own and then you have the data scientists that not only um cleans data uh, uh, collects data but also help organization to derive insights from the from the data sets now i will i will major a little more on on the data scientist um, and we'll talk about that later but also you have the 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 machine learning um scientists um some some call them machine learning engineers um organization like uh, uh amazon will call them machine learning engineers um and and what do they do mostly they spend most of their time developing algorithms and and they take a a more um a more mathematical one step deeper than the data scientists to this they spend their time developing algorithms if you see people working on um robotics robots i saw a, a video of a, of a gentleman um that are working on on robots you know that help um people with um 
um, that are, you know, uh, people with disability to be able to, to do things, you know, with robots. And, and these are people making this, working on this thing at the back of their houses, you know, <laughs> somewhere in Africa. Um, those are, I call them machine learning, you know, engineers, because it, at the end of the day, it also comes down to um, data science, come down to algorithms. But on the, on the other spectrum, you have research scientists that actually, um, goes one step further, working on, you know, um, taking a research position um, to, to solve problems um, based on all these other areas. So there are several opportunities for you in this field, several opportunities. And you can begin to think, hmm, what really excites me? Um, what's really, uh, what, 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 which of these other opportunities can I pursue? And the good thing is that, out of all of these opportunities that are that are mentioned here, there are several organizations today that are looking for someone that can do at least one of this. Think about Facebook. Think about um, Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services. Think about Amazon. Think about Google. These companies will go to any length to find skills. If they find that oh, we have skills in this place, um, they will literally bring an office. I am envisioning, you know, that day when they actually start to open um, de development and analytics centers in places like Nairobi, Lagos, Accra, um, because they have, most of these companies, they have offices in places like China, um, uh, India, as a low cost, you know, centers. Okay, where to them it is a low cost center, but to most of those places it is career opportunities. It is you know, um, a uh, 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 cash inflow into the economy um, for for those com countries. And so I am looking forward to to that day when we would have critical mass and most of those high tech companies can start to 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 um, open offices in some of our nations across Africa. So I'm sure you are thinking about which of these um, will work for you. Now, I want to talk a little bit about um, data scientists. But before I go on, um, can we check if if we have questions that I can, I can answer quickly? Uh, not yet for now. Maybe we can proceed, then they can ask later. All right. So if you have questions, please go ahead and, and post your questions and then we will um, we'll talk about it. All right. So who is a data scientist and what does a data scientist do? I think that's um, the, the crux of what you or what we are talking about today. A data scientist um, solves problems. That is the first thing you need to understand. Now, if you know how to um, write Python or use R. Um, some people have asked me, um, okay, so I want to become a data scientist. Should I learn R? What do I need to know? Well, I always say that data scientists solve problems. Um, it is much more than any tool. On the uh, right side of your screen, you will see a number of tools. And these are not limited. This is, this is just some of the tools that data scientists use. And, and so you can't, you may not be able to learn everything and you do not have to learn everything to become a data scientist. If you do understand what exactly is the data science process and you can participate in all of this, then you have started your journey as a data scientist. Okay, so there are tools in data science, but learning the tools does not make you a data scientist. You need to be able to actually um, be able to, you know, walk through the entire process to solve problems. So on a day-to-day -day basis, the data science pro pro process actually starts from, can you frame the problem? Okay, there is a problem that we want to solve. Can you think through this problem and say, okay, um, we, the, the the business has come to you and say we are not making enough money from this part of the of the business or we notice that we are losing money in this part of the business can you help us to to find um solution to it by looking into the data all the healthcare um in the health life sciences they say we notice that when we 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 give these drugs 
Um, it works in some cases and it doesn't work in some cases. We have the data. Can you help us to dig into the problem? And so the data sciences will be the person to actually, um, you go and dig in into the data, frame the problem. What is the problem? Is it even a data science problem in the first place? Um, and, and, and that is extremely important to be able to say, it's a data science problem. It's not a data science problem. It's a predictive analytics problem. It is not a predictive analytics problem. That is the job of a data scientist. So you have to frame the problem. Afterwards, you collect the data, all right? So the data scientist collects the data. In most cases, your data will be in, in several um several you know sources you have data coming uh in some cases coming from uh csv files coming from excel file coming from the internet um you need external data do we need to use some free data sources um that, you know you you'll be the one to say okay we need that data that data will work for us but we don't need that data so data scientists you will collect the data beside collecting the data then it's cleaning the data um, and that is the fun part. Um, most people would love to jump to maybe presenting a very nice and beautiful visualization that shows the solution to the problem. Well, that is the that would be like your your I would say maybe five percent of your role as a as a data scientist. Uh, while some people would like to you know understand how do I um, how do I create um, algorithms. Um, I've heard about logistic regression. I've heard about um, uh, SG Boost. I've heard about you know you you talk about different algorithms to make predictions. Um, people say that, that as a data scientist you make predictions. Yes, you do, but that is also maybe ten or twenty percent at most of your work. Where you really work is the data collection and the data wrangling, um, cleaning the data sets that come in. Your data never ever comes clean okay your data will come you know from in different formats and you have to spend time to make sense of that data to clean that data um to transform the data um and make the data into you know uh, uh, uh in, into formats that it will be that will be usable for you to solve the problems that you are working on and then you move to the next stage of actually exploring the data Okay, so you set hypotheses and say, oh, okay, initial, at the initial stage, what is the data telling us? Okay, before you even go deeper into, into your analysis. At the initial stage, what is the data telling me? Um, do, do we, are we, are we, the, the hypothesis that you said, is it in the right direction or should we just stop right now? Or do we need to collect more data? And, and so that is also a very important part of the data science process. And then the next, which is kind of the fun part that most people want to do, is the predictive analytics. And what do I mean by that? It is where you take the historical data, and based on historical data, you want to make predictions of what will happen in the future. For example, um, in a banking transaction, Okay, um, there is there are algorithms running at the at the background of every that is that is checking at the background if a transaction is a fraudulent transaction. So there is a, 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 a data science or machine learning algorithm that is running at the background for every transaction that you run. Maybe you get a text message that says, um, "Are you the one that is really?" doing these transactions do you want to validate um typing a one or, or, or a zero or um, we will call you to confirm that this is not a fraudulent transaction that is some predictive algorithm running at the background and trying to check if you know um a, a fraudulent transaction is about to be made and 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 then several others you know several other things that run um several other opportunities i will talk about that in the next slide and then, of course, you have the communication of results, presenting the results to different um, different audiences. All right. So you, you, the way you will present your results to data scientists like you will be different from the way you are going to present your results um, to executives that only think in you know um, money terms. Okay, what is the value that this is is it showing us? You can work on a very 
exciting problem um, where you have, you know, written a lot of algorithms and done this and done that. But the, the guys in the suit, they don't care. They just want to know how much, how much shillings are we making from this? That show me the dollars. That's what we are talking about. Um, but this gives you uh, a, a broad spectrum of what the data science actually do. Now, the question is, is this for me? That's where you probably will be asking yourself right now. And I, I, I'm very happy to say that um, irrespective of where you are coming from, you can actually find a space in data science. Why do I say that? Data science is actually three, it has three cardinal areas, okay? So if you look at all that I've talked about here, you can, you can bucket everything into three cardinal skills. Number one is the programming skill. You would have to write some programs, obviously. And so you can decide, um, do I want to learn uh, Jupyter? Do I want to learn Python? Do I want to learn R? Do I want to learn SPSS? Do I want to learn uh, uh, SAS? There are several programming tools that you probably will, that you can choose from. And you don't have to learn everything. You can start with one. Okay, and and the, the the beautiful thing is that anybody can learn programming. It's like learning how to talk. Okay, so if, if you are studying English or psychology right now, um, if you are studying microbiology right now, if you are studying uh, uh, industrial engineering, like I wanted to, if you are studying mathematics or, or chemistry, um, you have, you probably at some point. You have you you would have you know used some form of programming, even if it is just to be able to say if then and else. Um, if you if you have done that in the past, or even if you have never done it, I have someone that I'm actually mentoring currently that that has never done it. All right, she studied uh, biochemistry in the university and and left biochemistry industry and then decided to go and and work in event management, but she came back. Into and decided, oh, I actually want to become a data scientist, and she's doing extremely well. Of course, it's it was a little bit difficult at the at the beginning, but but she picked it up. Okay, so you definitely can learn um, the the programming skills, and then you have you have to learn a little bit of statistics or mathematics. Okay, it's not rocket science. You don't have to learn the 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 mathematics or statistics that they use in sending you know, the rockets to space to become a data scientist. But if you would understand the basic statistics, mean, median, mode, um, running hypothesis, this will also help you to become a successful statistics. And then the other area, the other do area is the domain knowledge. And that is the beauty of, statist of, of data science, the domain area. So irrespective of where you are coming from right now, the skill that you have learned that you have learned or learning right now will become useful, all right? If you are studying law or you're studying um, uh, life sciences or studying engineering, there is somewhere in the data science, there's somewhere in the industry where they need data science. And that takes me to um, some use cases, all right? Now, in, in, in terms of use cases, the opportunities are limitless limitless. I mean, almost everywhere today, there is some form of algorithm running at the background to optimize, to save money, to save time. Um, you have recommendation engines on social media. Have you ever gone to Facebook or gone to LinkedIn and then you find LinkedIn suggest or Facebook suggesting to you, you may also want to be friends with this because there are five people also um, of your friends or in your network that are that are friends with this person, yeah, absolutely. So you you can become that that is absolutely some data science or machine learning work running at the background, and so that is one opportunity in retail. You will find out that they put eggs beside bread in very large retail store. At least you put they put eggs beside bread, and then tomorrow when you go there, you realize that okay it's not eggs that they have beside bread today it is uh it is butter that they have beside bread um i can tell you confidently that somebody is running some, some algorithm that is saying that okay if you put bread 
on if you put bread in the middle eggs on the left and butter on the right there is a likelihood that somebody is going to buy all the three so somebody is coming to the market i mean coming to the store and the wife i said buy bread and then you get there buy bread buy eggs and then i mean if you are like me they send you to the stores buy bread buy egg and uh, buy butter and i'm thinking about bread alone until i get it and i remember oh they said i should buy butter as well and eggs as well and so there is opportunity in the in the retail industry you have opportunity huge opportunities in healthcare and life sciences you have what you what is called today you know precision medicine where we are actually trying to develop drugs um for specific people not you know one drug for everybody but drugs for specific people with specific kind of of genomes okay and and that is ongoing that is working right now especially in areas of of, of cancer treatment and, and things like that and then you have the financial industry that i've talked about obviously you know in in education in predicting which student is going to be successful which student is going to drop out and things like that and and several other areas so there is opportunity for you it doesn't matter where you are coming from there is something for you um in 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 data science so let's talk about choosing choosing the right part what are the entry points into data science okay so you are in the university right now or you just left university or you're already in the in the work in the industry working and you say okay this is i think i'd like to pursue this why should i how do i do it there are four different areas and there is something for everybody okay one is the diy you do it yourself using the massive you know online courses massive open online courses they are cheap you can spend ten dollars and buy a course on on udemy or on coursera and there are actually a plethora of courses that you can do of course there are problems with that because research shows that about 10 percent of people eventually complete it because you're going to run into problems after you know trying you try to do this and try to do that and it seems you know not to be not to be working and so people get frustrated and they just abandon it and say ah maybe this is not for me or maybe i'm not smart enough well it's it's you are not alone if you ever find yourself um in that kind of shoe it is because it is the way the online courses are designed so it's it's not just you the other opportunity is also um you attend short courses you can attend a three to five day course to learn but that will only you know give you the basics you you can't call yourself a data scientist because you have attended a five-day course or three-day course and you now hold a very big certificate or a very beautiful certificate that um you know that will make you say oh i'm now a data scientist it does not make you a data scientist um but then you have the boot camps where you will spend average of three to six months some even go as far as as one year where you will be working with a mentor you will work on uh uh live problems okay you work on live problems you will go step by step by step um with boot camps why i love boot camps is it doesn't matter where you are coming from okay um as long as you are willing to learn um, you will be able to go through boot camps. Unfortunately, most of them are extremely ex expensive. They start from like your three thousand to twenty five thousand dollars. Of course, if you are in the US, some of them will say, "Come and do it." Um, you owe us twenty five thousand dollars. But we know that you are definitely going to get a job, and when you are done, um, we will. You, we will you will be paying us back 10 percent of your of your salary because they know the opportunities are there and it's not only in the us um in in other parts of africa there's there is always a company looking for a data scientist today and, and um I, I really want to encourage and i'm hoping that by the end of this you know uh, uh talk today somebody at least one person will decide okay actually i can do it if coyote can do it i mean this guy went to some some polytechnics somewhere in, in Nigeria, um, but he's, he's, he eventually is doing it. Um, yes, you, if, if, if that is you, please go ahead, pursue the opportunities. Um, 
you may not be able, you may say, oh, but that, that's too expensive for me. There are other ways. Start with the DIY. And I'm going to talk about, you know, some of the things that I am doing um, to help people in, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in true mentorship. Okay, I'll talk about that in a, a moment um, after now, and then we'll take questions. The other way is to get an MSc. You can decide to, to get a master's degree or a PhD, like I did. That's my um, PhD advisor there, and that was my graduation, the picture of my graduation. Um, that's another opportunity. It takes time, and it is expensive. Um, unfortunately, now, I don't know if we have professors on the line. Unfortunately, most of our universities um, across Africa are still not teaching um, these courses, okay? We are still teaching the whole programming languages. We are, we are not helping students to, we are not creating curriculums yet um, in this direction. But it, it's about time that we start, you know, training people and preparing people for opportunities that are actually in the industry and not just in Africa alone. I mean, we should be training the median age. The median age across Africa today is less than 20. Believe it or not, the median age in Africa is less than 20. I'd, and so I believe strongly that one of the things we should be exporting to the rest of the world is skills. We should be exporting skills to the rest of the world. And, and with all that has happened across the world today, you don't even have to leave your country to export your skills. Um, I used to travel like, you know, um, coast to coast before COVID started. Um, but today I've been sitting, this has been my office in the last one year. I've been sitting in this same spot in the last, you know, almost 11 months. I, I haven't hopped on a plane for almost 11 months. And I'm still able to do my job effectively. So I can as well um, move to my village, okay? If I can get good internet and be able to see my grandmother every day and still be able to do the job that I do for my clients today, for my company, for my organization today. So we should be teaching people on how to take um, uh, advantage of these and creating curriculums um, and programs for people um, to, to, to prepare them for the industry. All right, so what's, now you, you probably say, I, I love it, but I love the boot camp approach, but I, I definitely can't, uh, I can't, uh, it might not be for me because where do I put $25,000 together? Well, I, I, I also have, I have a program that I've created where, um, because of the passion that I have to help as many people as possible to get into the field, I created uh, a system where we curated a curriculum where you can come in, you would have meant, I, I spoke to a few of my friends across the world where we we kind of pledged to mentor people, okay? Um, you need you will obviously need to put up some money to, to be able to do it but we will provide one-on-one -on -one mentorship for you it is the same way of uh with what you what happened in the university you went to the university uh the lecturer will show up once in a week and then you have the library there but you did not become uh, a bachelor's degree older because you went into the library Okay, you still needed the lecturer to give you the projects, to work with you, to mentor you effectively through the program. And that's what we have done here as well. It's a four to five month program. You come in, provide one on one mentorship for you. Um, and then we will also, you work through and some projects, prepare you for interview and give you some career support that will help you to be able to present yourself um, to the industry, to be able to. Uh, 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 that come from, it doesn't matter where you're coming from, at the end of the day, the goal is for you to be able to say, I am a data scientist. I can take on any data science uh, problems or, or projects. I'm going to just run along um, so that we can we can take some questions. Um, and that's, um, this is the process for, for my organization. You come in, you complete a, a application. I schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with you if you accept it, and then we have assigned a, a mentor to you. Now, um, I think we've got just a few more minutes, and I, I'd love to take as many questions as possible. Uh, thank you very much. I'll start from text message. Uh, Kevin is asking, as an English teacher, do I stand a chance to be a data scientist? So uh, 
you said it's Kevin, right? Yes. Yeah. So Kevin, you if you are passionate enough, okay, if you are passionate enough, you do stand a chance. I'll tell you why. As an English teacher, you understand English, right? And then you understand words. Now, I want you to think about Google, okay? All of us use Google. In fact, you we even Google um, where do I how to how to find my wife on Google today. Now think about it. There is a huge algorithm that is working at the background, and all that algorithm is doing is what we call natural language processing. So that is a subset of that is a subset of uh, of data science and machine learning opportunities that anybody can take advantage of. Um, in the legal um, area today, you have people that are using artificial intelligence to read documents and do. And so definitely, Kevin, if if you want to pursue that, there are opportunities for you. You just need to say, I am I am I'm willing to pay the price. Of course, there is a price and that price is, you know, um, learning and, 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 and just put, putting yourself out there. So there, definitely, yes. Okay, I've got a question for Ray, from Raymond. Uh, Raymond says data collection has become more pervasive as technologies like artificial intelligence, uh, internet of things, drones and robotics becomes more critical for business. How do we build privacy and data ethics into the new technologies? Having in mind the privacy implication and risk can turn off customers and even employees. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond, for, for that very important question. Now, and, and it's quite an advanced level question, but I'll try to, to answer it um, advanced in terms of for, for this call. But yes, there are, there are ethics and privacy issues in data collection. For example, I'm not sure if Raymond has heard of the of the example where a, a father that has a teenager at home. Now in the US, you have you know several companies sending you coupons and things like that and just junk mail into your mailboxes. And this father received a coupon um, that you will send to that you will send to uh, pregnant mothers, okay, pregnant ladies. Why? Because they can see what you are buying. They can see your buying history, and at the background, they can say, hmm, definitely this lady is pregnant. And then they start sending you coupons to buy a diapers, to buy baby food, and things like that. And, and, and the father was really angry. Like, how can you start sending this kind of coupons to my um, teenage child at home? Whilst you know, um, she's just a she's just a teenager. You can't be sending coupons to her. What are you suggesting? She went, he went to the store, made a fuss, only to discover that actually the daughter was pregnant. Okay, so they collected data, analyzed the data, and then discovered that you know. Um, the question then becomes: Is there an invasion of privacy in this? Um, in that instance, yes, no. Um, but uh, to answer your question, you there has to be some humanity in the way we manage people's data today. Um, so you don't just go off and just you know throw the data to, to to algorithms and let the algorithms do whatever they want. You have to think about people. You have to think about implications. You have to you have to even think about biases, right? Um, there are. I, I, I tell people that CVs are read today with with artificial intelligence, and if your name sounds like mine, for some algorithms you don't stand a chance, because your name. I mean, the algorithm is who's 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 uh, I, I, I an anaconda. <laughs> is, I, I, is it Anyokoya or anaconda? And the algorithm is trying to you know make a sense of it. Who is this guy? Okay, and he said he, he hasn't seen people like these excel in the workplace, and he can automatically just you know eliminate me in the process from the beginning. And so there has to be some human and computer intervention to be able for us to take advantage of of 
um, the opportunities that are there without, you know, turning off com uh, people or even employees. Thank you, Raymond, for that question. All right. Do we have any other question? Yeah. Now, the other question is, how do they reach you? Should they be interested to pursue data science? So if you, if anyone is uh, interested, I am on LinkedIn. Please feel free um, to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'd be very glad to 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 connect with you. Let's let's continue the conversation on LinkedIn. Um, I probably won't answer Facebook, but on LinkedIn, I, I am very active. I respond to my messages on LinkedIn. And uh, you can drop me an email as well. Um, maybe Livingston, if, if you are able to, uh, feel free to share my email if anybody wants to reach me. Thank you very much. Maybe Dr. Doc, in Kenya, we call you Dr. Tari. Yeah. So what could be your closing remarks? Uh, you've given a very nice uh, discussion. What could be your closing remarks? Uh, we have some three minutes. Absolutely. So my, my in closing, I will say the opportunities are limitless. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. Um, if you if you if if you see that actually I can do this, anything that you decide to do, you can. That, let me let me put it that way. All you need is passion and determination. If you are passionate, if you are determined, if you are willing, the opportunities are limitless. And yeah, I invite you, if somebody like me from uh, some small town in, in Nigeria can go all the way and serve organizations like Google, Deloitte, Facebook today, I believe that you and I, I want to meet you at the boardroom sometime um, talking about data science. So I look forward to, um, I, I would say, I look forward to meeting you at the top. Wow. Thank you very much, Dr. Kayode, for gracing our occasion today. Really, I've learned a lot. Myself, I'm not a data scientist, but I've been able to learn. So I also try to learn something on data science and uh, be able to make some uh, predictive decisions on, on in life. Thank you very much for our discussion today. Today, we had Dr. Kayode Ayakonya. Uh, is from Nigeria, but currently in the US, and he has been able to take us through data science. Should you want to have an interest in data science, kindly go through the LinkedIn, you'll find his uh, profile. Also, you can reach him through kayode at datasequence.com for more information. Thank you very much, viewers, for this day. We look forward to our next speaker, our next learning experience, so that we are able to learn about careers. We avoid the misinformation we have about careers and reduce our knowledge gaps. Thank you very much, and may you have a good uh, day. And may God bless you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.